In this video we are going to see how to install a Windows Server 2022 machine with a graphical user interface. And before we begin the video, I just want to mention that this particular video is part of a bigger series about Windows Server 2022. And you can see more if you go to my channel and find the playlist Windows Server 2022 mega series. Also, all the code and the presentations that you see in my videos are on my GitHub page and you can find the link in each video's description. And if the video is useful for you, then I would appreciate if you share it and like it. And if you want to see more, then you can also subscribe to my channel. So let's talk about uh, the minimum requirements for installing Windows Server 2022 before we begin. Uh, the first one is regarding the CPU and uh, being uh, 2021 at the moment, it's no surprise that you need a 64-bit processor and it should uh, be at least 1.4 GHz in speed. I think whatever you use should suffice. Uh, next is the RAM. Microsoft says that the minimum amount uh, that is needed is 512 megabytes of RAM if you want to go with server core and 2 gigabytes if you want to go with the graphical user interface version. Also, if you are installing a Windows Server on uh, physical hosts, then it would also be great if you have uh, error correcting code memory. As far as disk space goes, 42 GB should be okay for a basic installation, although if you are in really installing it for a production workload, maybe 50 or 60 GB would be better in my opinion. Also another thing regarding RAM is that uh, even though Microsoft says that 512 MB is enough to run a Windows Server, it is unfortunately not enough to install a Windows Server. If you uh, are going to install a new server, please give it at least 800 megabytes at first. And then after the installation is done, you can uh, go to the settings and set the memory back to uh, 512. If you don't set it at least 800 megabytes, you will get an error and uh, the installation will not continue. Let's talk about uh, the main Windows Server editions. First is the standard edition. And this one more or less has uh, all the features that data center has with a couple of exceptions. But what it doesn't have is unlimited licenses for virtual machines. So if you go with the Windows Server standard edition and you use Hyper-V, then you will have a license for the actual host and two extra licenses for uh, virtual machines. So the license that you buy for a standard uh, host will get you the license for the Windows Server and also two uh, virtual machine licenses. Now if you go with data center, which of course is more expensive, you will get the license for the host, but also you will be able to install an unlimited number of uh, Windows Server virtual machines. Of course, this depends on your workload. Uh, maybe it's better to get standard, but if you work in a big enterprise, in my opinion, data center is less of a hassle. Just buy it and install however many virtual machines you want on that host. Regarding installation options for Windows Server, we have two possibilities. First, the default is uh, the formerly named server core installation, which more or less now uh, Microsoft considers it the basic Windows Server, the normal Windows Server. And the reason you would go for server core and not uh, for uh, the server with a desktop experience is because it's uh, less resource intensive. It uses less uh, hard disk space since it has less rows and features. 
and maybe this is uh, more important it has less updates and hotfixes that it does and also it uh, most probably has less security uh, vulnerabilities now if you go with the desktop experience what this gives you is windows server with the windows 10 graphical shell over it and getting to installation types when you install windows server you have two possibilities the one that Microsoft and also I recommend is the clean install, meaning that you will format your first hard drive and you will lose all data that is on it if you have any data at the moment. So this will be a clean install from a scratch. If for some reason you need to make an in-place upgrade, so to upgrade from a previous version of Windows Server and if uh, Microsoft keeps its uh, maximum to um, editions uh, supported, then you could upgrade from Windows Server 2016 or Windows Server 2019. Then you would be able to keep your applications and files, but I would do this only and only if a clean install is really not possible. And finally, let's see what we are going to do in this video. So first, we are going to create a new virtual machine and install Windows Server 2022 on it. And after the server is installed, I am going to show you the basic settings that I do when I install uh, new servers in my test environment, like setting the name, the IP settings, enabling a remote desktop, and uh, configuring some firewall rules. So with that being said, let's uh, go on the Hyper-V server and start the installation. So I am on my Hyper-V server at the moment. You see I only have a virtual machine that uh, is used for routing. Let's create a new VM. So new virtual machine. Click next. Let's set the name. I'm going to name the first VM that I make DC01. Since this is going to be a domain controller. Of course, we are going to use generation 2. And if you don't know what uh, this means, you will see what it uh, means in a later video in this series. Uh, regarding memory, the startup memory is 1 gigabyte, and I'm, I'm fine with this. I will also enable dynamic memory. Uh, we need also to connect this virtual machine to a switch. I'm going to use one that I have on my host already. Now regarding the hard uh, drive, I will give it 40 gigabytes. I think it's more than enough. And let's choose the ISO image of Windows Server 2022. Here it is. So the VM is now created. Let's modify a couple of the settings and then we can start it up. Uh, let's go to memory and set the maximum RAM to only two gigabytes. Let's configure the machine to use two virtual processors and one more thing I like to do is the, uh, to configure the automatic start and stop action for the virtual machine for stop I want the virtual machine to be saved so nothing to do here and for automatic start I am fine with uh, automatically start if it was running when the service uh, stopped. Let's apply. And now we are ready to install Windows Server 2022. Double click on the machine and click start. And now we have to be fast and press a key to boot from the DVD. And we are greeted with uh, the screen 
that if you installed previous Windows uh, OSs, you will know very well. Here you can uh, choose the language settings and uh, keyboard and also uh, local settings. I will leave everything to default because I'm fine with US. Now here you can either install the server or repair the server. We can install it because we don't have anything to repair actually. This is a critical moment in your installation because if you choose the first or the third option you will end up with server core. So please be very careful here. I want the first server to have uh, also the desktop installed. So I'll choose the second option. Of course, uh, we have to read this. We just read it. Let's accept. Here is another option. You can either make an in-place upgrade, like we talked about uh, previously, or you can do a clean install, which is the second option. And you uh, have to select the disk on which you want to install uh, the operating system. Since we have only one disk, there's not much choice, so let's install. And now it's basically formatting the disk and uh, copying all the Windows files to the new partition. This will take about uh, 3 or 4 minutes, depending on uh, your virtual machine or your server. So. With the magic of editing, I will be back in a couple of seconds. So after a couple of minutes, you should be greeted with this screen, which prompts you to introduce a password for the local administrator. Now you can not put any password you want. It has to have uh, some complexity. This is because uh, Windows has a local security policy that uh, has some uh, password policies set and one more thing to take into consideration is that since this server will actually become a domain controller in the next video the password that you set now will be the password for your uh, domain administrator so i'm going to set directly a more uh, complex password that i will use as the password for my domain and forest admin And now we can log on and we can also get a more OK resolution. Just click connect when you are prompted and enter the password that you just set. Now when we go to full screen, it will look much more better at least in my opinion. The server manager starts up automatically when you log on to a server and uh, the first time you boot you also see this nice message that is telling us that we can use Windows Admin Center to manage our Windows Server environment. And we are going to see uh, how to use it in a later video in this series. Let's not get this message again. And now let me show you how to do a couple of basic settings. Most of them will be done from the server manager. And I'm going to show you also a uh, more detailed view of the server manager in a later video. For now, just go to local server. And first, uh, let's change the computer name, which at the moment is not so friendly. Just click on the name, click on change. And let's uh, enter DC01. Click on OK. OK again. Now we can close this screen. And for now I don't want to restart because we still have some things to do. So restart later. So after the computer name is done. Let's move on and enable remote desktop. And this is done from here. Click on disabled. 
click on this value and press OK. And you can apply. And now it's enabled, even though here it still says disabled. This is because uh, the server manager has not refreshed yet. Let's also uh, set the IP settings. Here in Ethernet, you can click on IPv4 address. You're taken to this screen. Uh, right click on Ethernet, properties, and we want to set the Internet Protocol version 4 settings. So let's set the address, the mask, and the gateway. If you have a test environment, maybe you don't have a gateway, so you don't have to put it. I have one and I will configure it. Also, seeing as this is the first server in our environment and we don't have DNS yet, we don't have to set anything here for the moment. So press OK. OK again. And we are done with the IP settings. I will press no here. And one more thing I want to show you is also how to set some basic Windows firewall rules. Click on start and type Windows firewall. And this is what you want. Now go to advanced settings. And here we want to go to inbound rules and find the rules that we want to enable. The first one is echo request ICMPv4. This is for ping. And the second one is for SMB in. This is for file sharing. And the reason I usually enable these in my test uh, environments is because I want to quickly check if a server is online using ping. And uh, most of the times I want to copy files and programs from one server to the other. So, of course, I enable SMB. And this was it for installing and making basic configurations on Windows Server 2022 with a graphical interface. In the next video, we are going to promote the server to a domain controller. If you enjoyed this one, then please like it and share it. And I'll see you in the next one.